Today we're going to continue to explore this idea of solving equations while still focusing on one-step equations. So for this standard again, our goal is always to get the variable on a side by itself. That way we can determine the value and we know what our x or our unknown variable is supposed to be. Again, the golden rule for solving equations is that you must do the same thing to both sides. The reason that this is our golden rule is because we want to imagine our equation like a scale. So I've drawn a picture here that would be used as balance. Right now it's saying that x is equal to x and this is a true statement so our balance is equal. The golden rule says that whatever we do to one side we have to do to the other side. So if I would add 1 to the left side of my equation and not do it to the right side, this equation is no longer true. But if I add 1 to the right side, now both sides are still x plus 1, and so it would still be equal. Okay, so we want to keep this idea in mind as we continue forwards, always remembering that our golden rule says that we must do the same thing to both sides. To begin, we're going to start with this simple equation here, x plus 2 equals 5. Many of us can look at this equation and know what x should equal because we know our basic math facts. We know that 3 plus 2 would end up equaling 5. But there are actually multiple ways that we think about this. Some of us might have started with the number 2 and added by counting up to get to 5, thinking 2, 3, 4, 5, I needed to add 3. Others of us might have taken 5 and subtracted 2 to figure out what x would need to equal. And the second method is actually what we call using an inverse operation. We took 5 and we subtracted 2 to figure out what x was supposed to be, and then we knew that x would equal 3. Using an inverse operation is actually a really good algebraic way of solving equations, especially once they get more complicated. So what exactly is an inverse operation? An inverse operation is actually just a fancy way of saying that we're using the opposite operation. So just like we did up here when we saw x plus 2 equaling 5, and we thought about using subtraction to help us figure out what x is, we actually use the inverse of addition, which is subtraction, to help us figure out that x equals 3. So the inverse of addition is subtracting, and likewise the inverse of subtracting is adding. Similar to this, we have multiplication and division, which are also inverse operations. So when we see multiplication, we can think about using division to help us figure out what our value would be. On the other side of that, if we have division, we can think about using multiplication to help us figure out what our value will be. Let's test out using inverse operations with four different examples. Our first example, we'll try the problem x plus 4 equals negative 2. So you might look at this and be wondering, how can it be that we're adding, but we're ending up with a negative number? Well, this would be a good time to try to use our inverse operations. Again, our goal is always to get x on a side by itself, and we have to keep in mind that we have to use the golden rule and do the same thing to both sides. So if I have x over here, and I also have a plus 4, I want to try and get rid of the plus 4 so that I can get x by itself. To undo this plus 4, I can subtract 4 because it's the inverse operation. 4 minus 4 is going to end up equaling 0, and all I have left on this side is x. Now using the golden rule, if I subtract 4 from the left side, I also need to subtract 4 from the right side. So I would have negative 2 minus 4 would equal negative 6. This means that x equals negative 6. And I can check this by plugging negative 6 back in my original equation for x. So I would have negative 6 plus 4 equals negative 2. And when I do this, I can run through this here and I see that that is a true answer. So I know that x does equal negative 6. For our second example, we'll try using some decimals to see if our inverse operations can still help us there. So we have x minus 3.4 equals 7.1. Now decimals can be a little bit tricky, but if we use our inverse operations, we can easily solve this one here. So right now we currently have x, and on the same side we have a minus 3.4. Again, we want to get x on a side by itself, so we want to get rid of this minus 3.4. So the opposite of subtracting would be adding. So if I add 3.4, a negative 3.4 and a positive 3.4 are going to cancel each other out, and all I have left on this side is x. If I added 3.4 to the left side, I also need to add 3.4 to the right side. 
And now I can quickly go through this and I can see that x is going to equal 10.5. So I think that x equals 10.5. Again, I'm not finished until I check it. So I should take this 10.5 and plug it back into my original equation. When I do that, I have 10.5 minus 3.4 equals 7.1. When I run back through this, I see that 5 minus 4 in the tenths would equal the 1, and 10 minus 3 would equal the 7. So I know that this is true, and x is equal to 10.5. For our third example, we'll go ahead and try some multiplication. So we have the problem 6x equals negative 18. Again, we're thinking about using inverse operations, and since I have 6 times x, the inverse of multiplying is dividing. So I can divide by 6 on this side because 6 divided by 6 is 1, and that means I have 1 times x, which just simply leaves me with an x. So the 6's will cancel each other out, and the golden rule says because I divided by 6 on that side, I also have to divide by 6 on this side. Negative 18 divided by 6 is going to be negative 3, so x would equal negative 3. And I can check my answer by taking 6 times negative 3 and seeing if that equals negative 18 and it does, so I know that x is equal to negative 3 for this problem. All right, and for our final example here, we'll try some division. We have the problem x divided by 5 equals negative 4. So again, thinking about inverse operations, I already see division on this side, but with x, and I want to get x by itself. So in order to undo the division, I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by the same number that I have because now if I have 5 and I multiply this by 5, I'm actually just multiplying through the top. So we have to think about our fraction rules. When I'm multiplying, I'm really just multiplying 5 times x and then 1 times 5. So I could rewrite this as 5x over 5 if I wanted to. Either way, my 5s are going to cancel out because 5 divided by 5 is just 1. And so I would be left with x. And then because I multiplied by 5 on one side, I also have to multiply by 5 on the other side. And so I would end up with negative 4 times 5 equals negative 20. So I have x equals negative 20, but I need to check and make sure that that's correct. So I take negative 20 and I plug it back in for x. So I have negative 20 divided by 5 equals negative 4. Again, that is true, so I know that x does equal negative 20. In review here are just a couple reminders for you. Again, for the standard, our goal is always to get the variable on a side by itself so that we can determine the value. Today we did that by using inverse operations, meaning that we were using the operations opposite of what we saw to help us solve for that unknown variable. For example, if we saw addition, we would use subtraction, or if we saw division, we might use multiplication to help us figure out what the value is. Most important thing to keep in mind is that we need to follow this golden rule here. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other side. That way our equation will stay balanced.